Okay, charger is in action. Um, last couple of examples here. Again, this works just the way it worked when we were dealing with constants. Let me erase some of my mess from the last one. Um, we are hoping to remove radicals from the denominator. And this is not too hard if you just have a plain old square root or cube root sitting there and you can just multiply it by itself until it cancels out. It gets even trickier when you're looking at addition in the denominator along with the radical. So the square root of x plus 1 in the bottom, this is trouble because if I just try and multiply top and bottom by root x, I get 5 root x on the top. And on the bottom, I have to distribute, so I'd get root x squared, which is just an x, that's wonderful. But when I multiply the 1, I still have a radical in the bottom. And I can try and do it again, and I'll just end up with an x root x plus x. And no matter what I do, one of the two will always have a radical if I just try and multiply by plain old root x. So, scratch that, back to the drawing board. What we rely on is the difference of uh, square sort of structure. We know that if we have an a plus b times an a minus b, then when we multiply it out, um, inside, left, there we go. So our first is going to be a squared. Our outside is going to be minus a b. Our inside is going to be plus a b. And our last is going to be minus b squared. And the a, b's will cancel each other out, addition and subtraction are inverses, and all we're left with is a squared minus b squared. Notice that everything there gets squared, so if either a or b was a square root, it would no longer be a square root. So if we want to apply this, we're basically saying our a is a root x and our b is a 1, so we want to multiply it by a root x minus 1. So whenever you multiply two binomials, two terms, right? x plus 1 has two terms, x minus 1 has two terms. Um, and they have the exact same terms within them. Both have root x, both have 1. And you just change the sign that's between them. You're going to end up with this difference of squares. And just so that you can really see it in action and know what's going on, I recommend going to the trouble of foiling that out and not just memorizing this a squared minus b squared business, um, at least for a little while. At some point you can say, okay, I see what happens, I get it, and quit doing that. But at first, I would say, okay, what happens here? Root x times root x is x, root x squared is x, uh, outside. Root x times negative 1 minus root x inside root x times positive 1 plus root x and last is 1 times negative 1 so minus 1. So notice again we have a plus root x and a minus root x uh, addition subtraction or inverses those will cancel and all we're left with in the bottom is x minus 1. In the top um, we have to multiply our 5 by our root x minus 1. I would just say that personally, I don't really care if you distribute or not. My guess is that some of your WAMAP questions are going to want you to have that multiplied out. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. If I multiply 5 by root x minus 1, I have to make sure and distribute so that the root x gets multiplied by 5 and the 1 gets multiplied by 5. So that, again, is considered a simplified answer. Does it really look simpler? It kind of looks messier. I have more terms floating around. But the idea is that um, dividing by a whole number or even a fraction or a decimal is way easier than dividing by a root of a number. That's really tricky. Um, overall, I don't really care. So again, you have these things. I'm making you do them, and then I'm telling you I don't care, and it's so frustrating. But the skill is what we're working on. This is a really big skill class. So we need to know how to get rid of radicals inside of fractions. And actually, often what we'll end up doing is rationalizing numerators. But this is a great way to practice, and it does allow us to at least have answers that match up a little more closely, so it's easier to tell if people are doing the same thing or not. 
So kind of a convenience thing for now. I promise it's important later. Last one, same idea, a little bit messier. Um, we have a three minus two root X and we want to get rid of radicals. So we're gonna rely on our difference of square structure and say, okay, this is my A minus B. If I want that difference of squares, I have to multiply it by A plus B. So the conjugate is the exact same thing, different sign in the middle. And there's other places this comes up. If you've worked with imaginary numbers at all, which we will not, there are no imaginary numbers in this course, or the next one, or the next one, or the next one, or the next one, um, people often like to throw them in just because it's interesting, and I agree, but it's not something that's useful up through your calculus. It is useful in other places, but uh, we'll save it up until it's actually in the near future for you. Whatever we do to the bottom, we also have to do to the top. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my multiply. We're multiplying fractions, right? Um, so we're going to multiply the 4x times 3 and get 12x. And then we're going to multiply the 4x by 2 root x. This one's actually getting fairly messy and tying in a little bit with our multiplying and dividing, which I think is not a bad thing. So 4 times 2 root x, we can multiply the 4 and the 2. That gives us 8. Um, but the x and the root x, I would just leave. There are ways you can try and combine that, but what we get we would consider less simplified, so I think it's great as is. For the bottom, again, I'd like to just walk through. Uh, our first is 9. Our outside is 3 times positive 2 root x, so that's going to end up being plus 6 root x. Our inside is negative 2 root x times 3, so that's going to be a negative 6 root x. And our last, that was our inside, our last is a negative 2 root x times 2 root x. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And root x times root x is x uh, root x squared, which is just x. As expected, if this doesn't happen, we've done something wrong. We get a positive 6 root x and a negative 6 root x. Addition, subtraction, cancel. So we have um, nothing left in the middle, 0 left in the middle. Instead, we just have a 9 minus 4x. And that, again, is considered simplified. There is a single root left over. That's OK. We started with a single root. Again, I totally with you if you look at that and you say that doesn't look simpler. Um, just focus on the fact that removing radicals from one part or the other of a fraction is our skill. That's what we're hoping to be able to do. Okay, so changing appearance of radicals, the end. Thanks for watching.